All right, so today I'm gonna show you the DIY modifications on this pedal boat. Been working on it about three months. I've had a couple good friends help me. Jeff Anderson originally started helping me. And my buddy, Brian Jones with Flint Hill Catfishing, he's helped me. And we're gonna go around and just show you. All right, so we're gonna start right here with the control panel. This is just a four bank. Uh, you got your, head, your floodlight spotlight. You got underglows, you got your nav lights, and the anchor light. This right here is a potentiometer. This wired through a PWM, pulse width modulator. This right here is neutral, so to speak. That's forward, that's reverse for the trolling motor. And the more you turn this knob, the faster the motor spins. Learn all unit that I added I got from Walmart. I think it was about 130 bucks. It's a Garmin Striker 4. Has GPS, uh, speed, water temperature. It's a pretty nice little unit for the money. It actually works good. When you see fish on there, usually you catch fish. This is a Bluetooth speaker that I mounted with a GoPro mount. Um, you just power it up and it connects to your phone and you can listen to music while you're fishing if you like. Spotlight here, it came from Walmart. I think it was around $60, $70. I'll get into detail, but it comes with a remote. You can make it spot or flood, and it'll flash SOS, and it will flash strobe. I added LED light strips for your navigation lights. And of course, the anchor light in the back. It's high enough right now. What a lot of people don't realize is that some of these boats have these little short ones and like the motor or your body. People can't see that. I want them to be seen in this little boat. So you can extend it up there. And I'll show you how that works with the switch that says anchor. There's your anchor light, your nav lights. It's the next switch over. All right, so the underglows, three reasons I did it. One is cool. Two, it might attract fish because you can change colors. And three, I want to be seen on this little boat if I'm out that night. I don't want to get run over. All right, so the underglow switch is the third switch. I turn it on. All right, and then, of course, the spot flood light, I'm gonna cut it on. It's actually pretty bright. All right, so the steering, this is the original steering handle, and there's a, a rod, metal rod, that goes back to the rudder. I removed the rudder and attached a, a clamp to the trolling motor, and I'm gonna show you. So back here, what I've done is I took a little L bracket. I don't know if you can see it right here. And I drilled a hole in it and put the original rod that turned the rudder into that bracket. I notched the bracket here and here and bent it around a metal pole and then used a stainless uh, hose clamp and clamped it here. That's how you steer. Okay, so I'm gonna explain how I put this trolling motor through the hole and didn't get any water in. This is just a four inch access port that I had already installed when I done the original idea up at the front that didn't work out. So all I've done was drilled a hole in this and then of course drilled a hole in the bottom here. And I took this, I don't know if you can see this white, this is thin wall one inch PVC. And I, I cut it this length right here and I pushed it in and then took Lexel, which is a very good sealant and went around here and here. There's no way water can get in this hole. And your shaft of the trolling motor slides in this tube right here. That's what holds it up while you're in travel or when you get out on an island or something. 
this goes all the way to here and then you can snug this back up so you don't lose it and there you are and this pipe this sleeve it slides up and down in there and there's no water can get in this hole all right so one of the biggest pains in doing a project like this is running the wiring it is awful i'm telling you get ready it is terrible so what you have to do you have to have access and what i've done is install these six inch scupper holes access points whatever you want to call them comes with a bag i've got stuff in here fire extinguisher i can charge my uh got my cheaters you know when you get old this is a battery pack. I can charge my phone or I can charge the battery back up on the Bluetooth. This bag here, that's the remote for the LEDs. This is a remote for the spotlight. Keep all that in there. But see here, down in this hole, I mean, you can stick your whole arm in there. And if you see the foam that's in this boat, it's hard styrofoam. It actually gives it strength for where you sit. You have to have these holes. Here's another one I installed, it's out of the way. It's not gonna hurt your butt. You have to have somewhere that you're gonna run your fish tape and fish all your wires from where you're going to the battery or to the switch, whatever you need. So here's the battery. It's located in where I cut the foam out. This connection is SAE connection. You can unplug this, and I got an adapter that plugs here. This goes to the battery, and then you can hook it to your charger and charge the battery without removing it from the hole. This battery is strictly dedicated 14 amp hours to run your sonar, uh, all of your features here, the anchor light, the nav light, the underglow LEDs and the spots. I'm gonna show you how to put this back in without breaking it. Trust me, you wanna pay attention to this. Just put your bag in. You see the, the bottom little clip? You slide this ring under, that, that holds that ring, okay? And then you can put stuff in here. This tab is what holds the latch, like I said originally. You just turn it and it's locked. All right, so, if you have this particular Sun Dolphin Sun Slider, I was telling you about the adjustable seat. I don't know, sometimes they they get loose. If you hit a bump, it could actually come out. So this is how I fixed that problem. So I took a rod tie down from Walmart. I just clip it right here. If it does bounce up, you can, you're not gonna lose it. And you can adjust it with that on. When I get it to where I'm fishing, this doesn't bother me, but you can just disconnect it. All right, so you notice this foam padding. All it is is uh, a workout pad from Walmart. It's an athletic works exercise workout pad. I uh, put silicone down after I trimmed it how I wanted it. Um, I made this so that you could get access, and when I'm sitting in the middle, this doesn't hurt my back. When you got two people in here, it's fine, but one, it tends to lean a little bit, so I sit in the middle, just between my legs and steer, and I got all my controls right there. But I just cut it out. I didn't do a real good job. I done it with scissors. Could have been done better. And just use regular 100% silicone, make you a bead, and just stick it and let it dry. And it, I've used it four or five times, and it's still there, still holding, and it's comfortable. All right, so. You see this little indention? This is supposed to be a cup holder, which is not really useful for anything but laying a cork or a hook or weight or something in. You got these two back here that I hadn't modified. Come with me, I'll show you. You had the exact same thing here. And what I've done is I bought these cup holders from Walmart, they're like $3. And I cut that hole out, popped them in, Put a little Lexel right here to seal it. I can't remove these. No, no need. I have access here. 
uh, but I installed them too. <clears throat> and here it had the same little short, good for nothing. You set your drink in there and something moves. I mean, it could fall out. But these, I put them to where you can just pop them in. They're snug. They're not coming out. And you can put your drink in there. You can put hooks, weights, your pliers, whatever. Stick right in there. Another reason that I put these in is when you're using the fish tape to fish your wires. This makes it a lot easier than trying to, to fish down here and turn here. You can come in an angle and fish your wires to where you need to go. Again, you got to have access and think about it before you do it because you're going to have to put something there where you cut. It just worked out. All right, so on this particular boat, you got to access back here. This is where you move it, and then this is a little finger hole where you pick it up. It's just kind of aggravating. So I just took a piece of black rope and drilled a hole and pop riveted it through there. And there, my friends, is the Ionic Deep Cycle Battery from Mooresville, North Carolina, here close to where I'm located. This battery has Bluetooth capability. You have an app on your phone and it picks up once you download the app. I can be in the house and check the battery. That is no lie. I can be inside my home. And this is in the garage and I can check the voltage, the temperature and everything. And when you're out on the lake, you can tell how much runtime you have left so you're not gonna get stuck. I really like that feature of this battery. This is just a 50 amp hour, but it's all you need. Right here, I took some door seal. It comes together like my fingers and I cut, just split it and I cleaned it real good with lacquer thinner and put a seal around here so no water could get in here. When this is in the up position, I took a little eyelet here. I took this eyelet, put a carabiner on it, hard to do from over here but basically that keeps that from falling back down if you're trying to work on something i put my worms in here and got something to clean my hands some soap and rag got some few tools in case i need them but you just unclip it and then lock it down all right so you see these rod holders i installed two on each side they're just to hold your rod or your fishing net as you're traveling or it's out of the way. Just keeps it neat. You can actually take the anchor that I have and you can stick it in there. Take this, turn it upside down and slide it down in there. Just like that. A lot of uses just to keep stuff neat and clean. Um, added two on this side. All right, so let's talk about the Bimini top. This particular model comes with a Bimini, okay? Well, they don't have a boot like your big boats. When you put your top up like this, there's a boot that you wrap around and zip up to keep this from flapping. So what I've done is got some rope, uh, Velcro strips and some Velcro here. And once I wrap it up, I just put these on. That keeps it from flapping out here and tearing your bimini top up, beating your poles to death. And this actually serves as a purpose with holding that up. It keeps it off your rods, off your anchor light. This is the mark that originally, before I installed the motor back here, it was pushing on my anchor light. That just keeps it out of the way. So we're gonna talk about this gas motor. I wasn't satisfied enough at the time. I want to pimp this pedal boat out. So a buddy of mine had this motor. It was brand new. I got it for cheap. These motors new are about 300 bucks on uh, Amazon. All it is is basically a weed eater. I'm gonna show you what I've done so far. basically comes with everything you see here except this i extended the handle just to make it a little easier for me i just 
took a piece of pipe inside a little piece of PVC, took this off of here, slid it on the PVC. I got this in case I lose it, it'll float. You just stick this in. I don't even have to take it out. That just, when you're sitting here, it just gives you a little bit more. This is your twist throttle. Your on off switch is here. The issue is back here. On this particular boat, if you'll notice, this has a built-in transom where I actually mounted the trolling motor to see how it was gonna push before I ever started trying to put the trolling motor inside the hull integrated in. This side has the transom. This side is round. If you look at it, it's just curved. There's no way to put a motor here. This was intentional. If you come around here, this, this ridge where the two pieces of the boat are put together is in the way. So I had to notch it. I notched it here and here. I put a piece of this starboard on each side to try to reinforce it. Took it out the first time. This was going under the boat. It was terrible. I felt like it was going to break this off. And it was pushing the nose down of the boat. And it was actually water coming over into the footwells. It was just a nightmare. It was terrible. I was so disappointed. I'd worked so hard on it. So I said, well, I'll just remove it and be happy with this. But I hadn't given up yet. It's still a work in progress. So here's what I've done so far. And I tested it yesterday. And it is a great improvement. I took two pieces of five and a quarter deck board. Cut them to fit. Well, I'm basically, now when I'm pushing, it's not caving in as bad as it was. See, that's moving a little, but I'm I'm pushing hard as I can. I mean, I'm about to pick the nose of the boat up. Before, that thing was touching here, and the, the prop was under here, which was pushing the nose down, and it was water. It was just horrible. I took a screw and screwed in here to hold this up. And... It's okay. I don't know if I'm going to leave it or not. It's, it's, you're using gas instead of your uh, battery to get somewhere. It runs four and a half miles an hour. It's loud. It is very loud. Exhaust is right here. Sounds like a, a pissed off mosquito. I mean, it is really loud. But it cranks on the first pull. If you can deal with the noise and you want to save some battery, you're going to take a long trip. I bought this jug, mixed it 50 to one, fit it one gallon. I filled the tank up, you see where it's at now. And that's how much I've used. I only filled it to about right in here. And I've only used that much through two, two days of testing, which were probably about an hour each. So you could literally take a gallon of gas and go out here and fill this thing up three or four times and you get about an hour run time is what they say, wide open. So you've got four hours of run time on this motor. I don't know how far you're planning on going. I don't know if I'm gonna leave it on or not. Like I said, it's a work in progress. If I take it off, I'm satisfied with the boat. Um, we'll see. All right, so to wrap up, this has been about a three month project working on the boat. I'm satisfied how it turned out. Get a lot of attention. It's comfortable. It's really comfortable to fish off of. You would not believe it. Um, it's stable. You can stand up on the corner. You go up in the cove, you need to go to the bathroom. You can stand up and go. You ain't got to worry about the boat turning over. Um, it's been fun. It is definitely a lot of work and sweat and cussing but it's worth it in the end i'm no engineer you know i it's a build in progress it's, you got a trial and error this thing and trust me a lot of this stuff i've done three or four times on this boat but what you see now i've done the work Ho hopefully to help you if you have this particular model or another model you can utilize what i've come up with if you have any suggestions to help me or better ideas let me know if you like it uh let me know if you don't like it let me know don't forget to like subscribe and share 
This is John. Catch my next video coming out soon. Thanks for watching.